You know, let me put something in categorical perspective. Mm. His age doesn't bother me. Okay? Mm. I want to say that of his age. He could be 19 years old. That doesn't bother me. His, the amount of terms he wants to do doesn't bother me neither. I mean, in Germany right now, Angela Merkel is doing a fourth term. Mm. Okay? In, 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 uh, in Rwanda, Paul Kagame is going for a third term. That's not what bothers me. What bothers me is, can you get the job done? That is the only mark we are supposed to be basing anything off of. Can Mugabe get the job done? Now, what is the job? The job is providing a pathway for prosperity for the people of Zimbabwe. Mm. If I am a young Zimbabwean mm. and I am asked, how are you going to be prosperous? Mm. My version of prosperity might be to access a good school. Mm. Your version of prosperity might be to take care of your sick mother. Whatever our different versions of prosperity are, they ought to be a pathway to get there. This is what Mugabe has failed. So when we focus on the job and we stop focusing on his personality, his wife's personality, his age, his wife's age, we get to a point where we can start answering the question you asked, which is where has the opposition been? Yes. The trouble we've had with the opposition is yes. this. For too long in Zimbabwe, we've had personality politics. So we spend more time talking about who is going to take over the country. Yeah. We don't spend half as, as much time talking about what do they want to do with the country. And so the, our conversation is very flawed. We're talking about who takes over, not what do they want to do. However, 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 Zimbabweans across the world, okay, in this country included, are now at a tipping point where they now have this feeling inside of them where they realize we could actually have a silver bullet to reimagine a new Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans are starting to think about what does a new Zimbabwe look like that they can go back home to, that they can take their children back home to. So the opposition doesn't matter. What matters to me, my brother, is the Zimbabwean people. And I think as they rise, as they find their voice, I call that a generational convergence. As we get to that generational convergence, mm. we are finally, finally, finally going to see a new Zimbabwe. I call it a new Zimbabwe because I was, I'm 29 years old, okay? I've never known anything outside Robert Mugabe. My mother has never known anything outside of Robert Mugabe. Mm. She kind of, you know, I feel so so much pity for her because yeah. she went from... Mugabe has been in power longer than you've been alive. Of course. What are you going to do to change the lot of Zimbabweans? Because it looks like Mugabe has a grip on the army, has a grip on, 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 the, on the ruling party. And, and uh, you know, if, 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 if his track record is anything to go by... Yeah. We must believe him when he says he's going to stand again next year. And, and, and he is going to stand. But the issue is not, is Mugabe going to stand? The issue is, are Zimbabweans going to stand up too? Because now, let me give you the statistical numbers. Here are the, 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 the figures, the, the arithmetic. Yeah. In the last election, you had 3 million people who voted. 2 million for ZANU-PF, 1 million for MDC. Mm. The virgin vote, that is under the age of 40, that has never voted in Zimbabwe, mm. is 4.5 million people. Mm. So there is 4.5 million who have never voted in the country, who for some whatever reason have either believed their vote doesn't matter or they've simply been uh, apathetic to the, to the yeah. process. If we wake up this virgin vote, I'm not even talking about votes out of Zimbabwe, of Zimbabwe, I'm talking votes in Zimbabwe. Yeah. We wake up this virgin vote, we can wake up a beast that's been sleeping. People know who they are not voting for in the next election. Sure they're they, very clear. But they're not they just to, don't know who they're voting for instead. You're not going to wake them up during the election. Have you started waking them up We now? are doing it right now. I, the, the reason I'm in Johannesburg right now, I had a meeting earlier this morning with a man called uh, Joseph uh, Busha. Joseph Busha has actually put in a program where he's transporting Zimbabweans in South Africa at his cost to the nearest border so that they can register and make sure that they can vote at the nearest border. He's put commissioners at the border. Right now we are on the ground. I put up a GoFundMe page. People can find it on my Facebook page. We're going into every province, my brother. Mm. We're getting young people out of every province. In my constituency where I live in, mm. we've got the highest turnout of virgin voters right now. Highest mm. turnout. So we're not playing because we understand that what is ahead of us is a choice. A choice between sticking with the past or shaping a new future for our country. I can tell you for a fact, I'm not going to be ruled by Grace Mugabe. Not me. Grace yeah. Mugabe can rule everybody. Grace Mugabe is not going to govern me. I am, you know, her goblin granddad is enough. But her? <laughs> oh, she can forget it. Tito, Grace Mugabe is Tito, not going to be my president. The, the, the <laughs> yeah, viva Zimbabwe indeed. Uh, uh, 